Hey everyone, it's Andy G here. I hope you're well. Today we're going to be walking through my track Tempest along with Matt Dybul and Rimsack. It's been released on Revealed Recordings. It's had a bit of support already as well, so I'm super grateful for that. And yeah, I'm going to walk through how he made this track called Tempest. And so yeah, let's get into it. So the way that this track came about was that Matt sent me a DM on Instagram. Uh, we've worked on two tracks before already, Countdown and Bounce to the Beat. He sent me this track idea that he had along with Rimsack and I heard it and instantly fell in love with it. Um, and then, yeah, I kind of added my own little Andy G twist to it, changed a few things up, added the vocal and now we have Tempest. Um, so yeah, the track starts off with a mini break which sounds like this. Heroes are born. They're forged in the crucible of adversity. Think of the times when life threw its worst at you, when the storms raged and the ground crumbled beneath your feet. Did you back down? So my idea behind this first little break was to tease the big breakdown a little bit because it's got, it's almost the exact same, but it just doesn't have any of the big synths or anything because when you're introducing a track, you don't want to have that. You want to build a nice little bit of tension to get the listener hooked um, and so we have the vocal which I'll get to later but in terms of the synths I believe it's literally just a Reese bass and then a drone sound um, the Reese bass is from Serum Heroes are born. F it's a nice real aggressive one and it's the Reese bass from Ryos' pack shout out to Ryos and then we have a little duck around 200 hertz and also 50 hertz just because a little bit of interference with the vocal and then also the other elements around. And then the drone is from a plugin called Abyss. It's actually a really sick plugin. You should definitely check it out. Um, and this is what the drone sound sounds like. It's it's almost quite like glitchy sounding. It's really cool. Um, and this is what it looks like. The plugin was called Tension, not the plugin, the preset. Um, and that obviously explains why it sounds like there's a fair bit of tension as well. Um, yeah, I don't know what any of the sounds do in that or like the parameters or anything. I just flick through the presets, chose one I like, and then stuck with it. And then we just got rid of the high end, the lows, don't want that to interfere with anything else around. And then that's all that, what's it, I think it's just playing a D minor chord. And yeah, it's just playing a D minor chord and just holding that sustained throughout. And we have some effects happening. And because the track's called Tempest, we want to have some effects that sound like you're in a storm because obviously another word for a major storm is a tempest and so what we have here is almost like a tension string and also like a sustained um, vocal shot that's what it sounds like to me these are the um, some of the stems that Matt sent me and we have this Atmos that's obviously was part of the drop almost like a percussion kind of thing got some as Matt called it extra stuff it's like a weird kind of trippy pluck pretty cool um, and then we've got some crash from Ras's patreon pack low impacts and then this is the storm aspect to it And so, yeah, it's like you're stuck out in a storm, of course. Um, and then I think that's all there is to that first little part. And then this is the build. So 
So for the to make the build sound full, you want to make sure you have all aspects in all the frequencies, especially in the low end. Um, I get a lot of tracks sent for feedback and a lot of people are lacking that bit of low end in the build. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but to really fill it out and to just make that tension a lot more, you need to ensure that you fill out all the frequencies of the spectrum. And so we have the respace again, and that's just playing the D straight throughout and it pitch bends up 12 semitones for a full octave and then we also have an aggressive bass that one's called access and that's from Armin van Buren's sam uh, preset pack and we're just cutting out the highs and the lows and just keeping it all nice and compact and we don't want that um, blaring out either because it's actually quite an aggressive sounding bass so if I took this off it's quite aggressive sounding and quite ugly so we just want to leave that on and don't want that to interfere with anything and then we've got an S1 imager to make it a little bit more narrower and I'm not sure we have a little stab which is teased in the build it's from Matt and that's just getting and then we obviously have the standard nice little aggressive shot there from Matt why for some reason I've put it in the drums obviously because it snares and rises I was like of course we had rises in this but yeah we have the snares and rises nice little build there and then we have this drum fill it's really cool little drum fill and yeah obviously I got sidetracked about the no rises thing but yeah it's just the usual we still got the little effect shot just to signal that change um, coming into the drop and then we have this little vocal it's from Ollie James's Patreon pack for We Are The Ravers. I thought it was a cool little um, thing to add. Just It filled it out, that drop. It was just missing that one thing, and that's what I believe was missing. And then we'll go into the first drop. So obviously it's a very minimalistic drop because we didn't want to go super hard straight away in terms of that main stage feeling. And so we'll go into the kick and bass. And so I have, well, the way that I did this track and how I was doing all these tracks in the past was that I'd have two channels. So I'd had a clean kick and bass channel and then also an overdriven kick and bass channel, which is the exact same, but I chuck an overdrive on it and that adds that little bit more grit. Just fills it up a bit, a little bit more, makes it sound a lot more aggressive. And so for the clean kick and bass, what we do is we have a low kick, which is filling out all the low end frequencies. And then we have a mid kick. And then we have another mid kick. The second mid kick is covering a lot more of the low mids, whereas the first mid kick is covering a lot more of that whole mid range frequency and also a bit of the highs. And then we have a top kick, which is obviously you want for the click. And then we have a rumble side bass, which sounds like this. And this is a preset that I use all the time. It's called Rolling Bass 3 from Nexus and it's part of the EDM 8 pack. And what I do is I put a filter over the top of it so it doesn't 
stick out too much and then we have a sidechain on it of course and then we have multi-band clean low end just to push that low end up a little bit more and we have an s1 imager make it more narrower so it doesn't interfere with any of the other elements and naturally that sound this sound or this preset is very very wide and so obviously want to make it more narrower and then I have a sausage fattener on the end and this simply just acts as a limiter I found that out through a laid-back loop tutorial that sausage fattener can also act as a limiter which is also pretty cool and then we have a rolling bass from Matt which is pretty cool and nice aggressive sound um, and then you have all this together and it's very very powerful kick and then for the overdriven kick and bass all I do is add a stock Ableton overdrive it sounds quite ugly but when you put it together with the clean kick and bass you get it sounding really nice and then obviously take away the lows because it sounds really ugly when you leave the lows in and whatever you do make sure you turn, turn down the overdriven kick and bass because it can get really messy and so for the leads we just have my signature stab which is I'm not going to give that away it's a preset from lethal and rave generator and there's a whole bunch of processing on that. We've got a bigger fire, novel tech character, decapitator, pro Q, reverb, kickstart. And then we have a stab from Matt. A cool kind of Tom percussion sound. And we're also introducing the lead in the second half of the drop. which for some reason you cannot hear. It's the Gold Foss. Hold on one second. All right, we're back. So the Gold Foss, when you're changing in between sample rates, it sometimes crashes. It's super, super annoying. Um, but yeah, this is like the introduction of the main lead in the second half of the first drop. obviously filtered out because we don't want that to be the main element of this first minimalistic drop in terms of drums we just have a few samples in here just some hats and a couple claps and then I add in my hat loop part of the club work sample pack and then we also have some almost like a low little tom thing just delayed along in the drop as well and effects we just have a little vocal gate thing and then we have some other sounds just some random little fill-ins and stuff and then we have this big brass which is really really nice sounding um, and that really pushes it that bit more and so now we head into the break it's very much the same elements as the first mini break and then we also add this vocal gate in towards the end of the break is also because of the gold foss so I'm just going to remove the gold foss all that all the gold foss is is basically it's just a constant EQ and it's ducking and or adding either or whatever one you set it to nasty frequencies and so with this vocal gate you'll be able to tell it's really harsh in the mids and so I always put that on it just to smooth it up that bit more and this is what the vocal gate sounds like preset from Avenger I'll take that off and so we'll go through the processing on the vocal quickly 
I don't think I did. Whoa, I did a lot more than I thought I did. All right. So this vocal came from like a hard style vocal pack. I was just trying to find something that would fit. Um, and I came across this one and instantly fell in love with it. Um, and so what we have is we just have a delay and a reverb. Heroes aren't born. They're forged in the crucible of adversity. Think of the times when life threw its worst at you. So just adding that delay and reverb just to make sure it's not sounding so dry. And then we have an EQ on the end, boosting the mid because it lacked a little bit of mid and then cutting off the lows as well because it did sound very, very low heavy. And then we have a double vocal. Heroes aren't born. They're forged in the crucible. Which is the exact same vocal, but it's offset a little bit and it's like pitched up or down. It might be down. Pitched up probably like 0 0.2 or 3 semitones just to give it, make the vocal feel a little bit wider and then also having a lot more character to it rather than just having this playing the whole Heroes time aren't born. because there's no real texture to it Heroes aren't born. They're forged in the crucible. not too much of a difference but a very noticeable difference and we also have this vocoder and the whole purpose of the vocoder in this track was to add a bit more grit to the main vocal and the double vocal because it was sounding a little bit too clean for what I liked and so I add a vocoder to it and it's literally only just playing just playing the um just playing D the whole time because that's obviously the key of the track is D minor and so I just kept it in that because I didn't want it to change too much melodically because then it would get all messy um, with the other elements as well and yeah that's all there really is to the vocal not too much we have a CLA mix hub just boosting a bit of the highs and then adding a slight bit of compression we have an EQ further removing the lows and just dipping some of the mids as well then we have a Sooth 2, which is the vocal harshness ultra preset. And I just changed the depth of that a little bit. And then we have a utility as well, just to turn down the vocal a bit more. And now we will get into the big synth section. A lot of people have liked this. It's actually quite simple compared to some of my other breakdowns. We'll just go straight into it. And so what we have is we have these, what I call trance saws. And that's that sound is making most of what the most of that synthetic not synthetic most of that synth um, power and so we have two presets from Nexus and then we also have a spy preset the first one is called bright trance lead from Armin van Buren which sounds like this so a nice bit of attack but not too harsh then we have this one which is called Big Saw Chords from EDM9. That one's a lot more brighter and that fits in well with the first preset because it's got a lot more click and not as bright. And then we have this last one from Spire and this one is called 1999 from a freshly squeezed sample pack. Which is kind of not aggressive not too bright it's just the perfect little filler layer and so the way that i did the melody was i took the chords and i just played them i think i might have 
done it on my keyboard like just my like laptop keyboard and just played around with a few little like rhythms and stuff and ended coming coming up across this one and what I did was I just took the chords chopped them up in the rhythm that I had and at times I would have changed the top or like the the top note of the chord just to change it up a little bit more like you hear in the second half of the break that I go up rather than down. So go up in the melody rather than going down just to have a nice kind of smooth transition into the build, building up like that main stage feeling, hands up moment, all of that. Um, and then we have a pluck sound which is doing the exact playing the exact same melody as the trance source and that's kind of just to add a bit crush effect and also adding a little bit more click to the uh, to like the main sound and so this one's called adrenaline from the revealed serum big room techno volume 3 pack and then we have the aggressive bass playing again, the Reese bass, then the vocal gate as well. Then we also have some pads playing. And what I did is we had the main chords and then I added a few notes in between just to change it up a little bit and give different voicings to give out different feelings and then this one is called airwave trance source one and that's just a stock nexus preset and then we have an up And that preset's called Vision from EDM9. And it's got the phaser built into it. I just turn the arpeggiator off and then use my own arp. And what I do is I put the chords in and then I use a Ableton feature, which is called arpeggiator, and it does the arp for you. And it's just a lot easier. And especially when you just want to be in the zone and just get the idea down, that's what you want to use. And so I remove the low end from that, dip some of the highs, a little bit of the mids as well. Then we have a S1 imager making a little bit wider and then we have an endless smile and simplon for the build here. And so the second build is the, actually do I have any drums? We have some claps, nice big stadium claps, a shaker, a snap and a hat um, and then there's nothing really else that there is in the breakdown then we have to build same as the first one but we're introducing the lead as well but I'm going to cover that now hey everyone I'm back um, the recording stopped because I was recording to um, somewhere on my laptop where I didn't want it to be I wanted it to be going to my hard drive um, but yeah, anyway, we'll get back into it. I'll start from the leads because I don't know where it cut off. But this is the lead that Matt Dybul and Rimsack sent me. The gold foss isn't working again. And so, yeah, their version that they sent me was a little bit more simpler. And I just changed it up a little bit to make it a little bit more aggressive and a little bit more just more main stage sounding um, and it's the same lead as the first drop and it's just got the my reverb on it um, if you want to copy the settings there they are go for it um, and then have a gate on it because I had a little bit of noise in the background um, this is the lead that I made and this is was like a response lead to the first um, lead that they have so it was the da 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 ba ba bo wa ba ba bo which is like the response the call and response thing and this is what this lead sounds like 
really, really weird and funky, but it was cool and I love it. Um, a preset from Diva called Revealed Lead called uh, Black Hole. And I think, no idea because it doesn't sound like the original. Um, I changed up like some of the settings in here to get it what it sounds like now. But yeah, that's the thing with Diva. You honestly just change a few things and you get really cool sounding leads. Um, and what we have on that is a bit of OTT just to make it a bit more brighter. Then we have a bigger file just to obviously what it says. Make it more big and open the synth a little bit more. And we have a novel tech character, which is just increasing the mids a little bit more, making them a bit more present. And then we have a satin 2, which is just doing a little bit of general saturation across the whole frequency spectrum. And then we have a reverb, of course. And then we have an EQ at the end just to remove the lows, bring up some of the highs and the mids. And then we have obviously the stab, that like Tom sounding stab, and then we have my stab. Um, and then it's only towards the end where obviously we use the pitch automation just to rise it up. So what we're doing is we're bringing that from 0 to 12 semitones, going up the octave just to try and signal that, you know, the track's finishing and this is like just the way that somehow I end my tracks. Um, and yeah, I think the only other thing to add was the... That little fill-in in the break. And all that is is just a bit of phasing which is called the phases from native instruments using the standard preset and then the simplon which is bringing the filter down and all together for the leads we just have more ott a little bit more to make it a bit brighter and then we have a compressor just to make sure that there's no drastic volume differences or anything and just really tightening them up that little bit more Simplon for the build and a smile for the build. Um, and I think that's all there really is to it. Um, hope you all enjoyed this uh, video. Hopefully you learned a little bit or two. Let me know what um, other tracks you want me to walk through. What tutorials you want to see. I'm going to be start posting a lot more couple challenges I'm going to do. And um, yeah, hope you all enjoy it. And I'll see you guys next time. All the best guys.